Welcome everyone to the Restful Sleep Challenge, the last two week challenge in our series. My name is Michelle Grokey and I'm an assistant professor at Montana State University and the health and wellness specialist for MSU Extension. Over the next five minutes, I will explain some of the health benefits of quality sleep, explain what exactly quality sleep is, explain some of the signs that you aren't getting enough quality sleep, and lastly, I will introduce the challenge. Sleep is essential to our physical and mental health as it helps our bodies and minds recover and rejuvenate from the stressors of everyday life. As a result, when we sleep well, research suggests that we are more energetic, happier, and also able to better concentrate. Everyone from children to adults can benefit from getting better sleep. Here on the slide, you also see some of the benefits to your health of getting good sleep. It includes reducing the risk of developing a chronic disease, improving your ability to fight off infection. Quality sleep can also do wonders for your mental health and your mood. It has been shown to improve memory and improve focus. On the right of the screen, I have a statistic that says in the United States, three in 10 working adults sleep for six hours or less per night. Sleeping for six hours or less per night increases an individual's risk for coronary heart disease by 35%, diabetes by 25%, stroke by 22%, and obesity by 21%. So what exactly do we mean when we say quality sleep? So there are two components of quality sleep, that being the quantity of sleep and how well you're sleeping. So although the average adult needs at least seven hours of sleep per night, some people may need more to feel fully well rested. But again, in addition to the quantities that you see on the top part of the slide, the quality of our sleep is critical. So in order to get quality sleep, our bodies must progress through the sleep cycle, which is composed of four separate sleep stages, N1, N2, N3, and REM sleep. Sleep scientists think that for each sleep stage serves a different purpose. For example, most of our dreaming occurs in REM sleep, which helps us process the events that have happened to us. If we don't properly cycle through these four stages, anywhere from four to six times per night, our bodies are unable to get truly high quality rest. So what are some of the signs that you aren't getting enough of this quality sleep like we just discussed? So here on the screen are some of these signs. So that includes feeling tired despite having slept long enough. So for most adults, that's a minimum of seven hours. Another sign is having difficulty either falling asleep or staying asleep. Another sign is if you wake repeatedly throughout the night and or are snoring or gasping for air while you're sleeping. If you need an alarm clock to wake up, that can be a sign that you're not getting enough quality sleep. Also, the other kind of the other side of things, if you fall asleep within five minutes of your head hitting the pillow. If during the day you feel groggy or are dozing off during daily activities like riding in a car or sitting quietly reading a book. And lastly, feeling irritable, anxious, or having a difficult time paying attention during the daytime, all of these could be signs that you are not getting enough quality sleep. All right, so what is the challenge for these next two weeks? So there are many ways in which we can adjust our daily lives in order to establish better sleep habits, aka better sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene includes many different habits, including following a consistent sleep schedule, making our bedrooms as comfortable as possible, avoiding doing other things other than sleeping in bed using, you know, for example, worrying or using electronics, and changing your diets to promote better sleep. So here on the screen, you see a list of simple changes you can make to your daily life in order to improve your quality of sleep. And so the challenge for the next two weeks is to try at least one of these sleep hygiene strategies per night for the next two weeks. So some things you can try, going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time each morning. Try to be consistent with these times, 
even if you have a day off or it's a weekend. Second, you could set an early enough bedtime so that you can get the recommended hours of sleep. And again, you can refer to the slide number two for those hours. Another strategy is to establish a relaxing bedtime routine, such as lighting a candle or reading a book before going to bed. Make sure your bedroom is quiet, clutter-free, and dark. Another strategy is setting your bedroom to a comfortable, cool temperature. Since our body temperature lowers while we sleep, setting the thermostat to a lower temperature at night can help you sleep better. And sleep experts here recommend a room temperature at or about at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid using electronic devices at least one or two hours before bed, and you can read on the screen as to why. Avoid eating large meals before bedtime. If you feel hungry before bedtime, I suggest um, snacking on a healthy snack, such as an apple or a banana, something light that won't fill you up too much, um, since that tends to have a negative effect on sleep. Similarly, in terms of diet, avoid consuming caffeine, nicotine, other stimulants within eight hours before your desired bedtime. And lastly, although we do know that exercise can certainly help you sleep better at night, rigorous exercise right before bed can also make it harder for you to fall asleep. So for the challenge, pick one of these every evening and, and do that per night for the next two weeks in order to help improve your sleep hygiene and get better quality sleep, thus making better improvements to your overall health. Thanks so much and enjoy the challenge.